Good afternoon. I'm Jim Nickerson with Dr. David Costell, director of the Ball State University Human Performance Laboratory. We're going to talk with Dr. Costell in just a moment about the Human Performance Laboratory, but first, Dr. Costell, tell us why we're appearing before our guests in this manner. Well, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't be in town for uh, the meeting, uh, and I thought it only appropriate that I have a chance to uh, uh, express my uh, feelings about the uh, activities of the laboratory and also to give a little history and background uh, that might be important in terms of uh, the presentations that are being made by Ball State. Uh, at the moment uh, that this tape will be played, I'll be uh, in Dallas, Texas, uh, making a, a two-day presentation uh, before the American Swimming Coaches Association uh, in an attempt to uh, try to share with them some of the research that we've been doing over the last five or six years. Dave, what is the history of the academic program at the lab? I came here in 1966. Uh, there was really no basic plan to develop uh, an academic uh, arm of the human performance lab, but uh, as time went by and the reputation of the lab grew, it became uh, apparent that we needed uh, to expand the physiology and biological science aspects of the program so that uh, over the years the program has grown to the point that it uh, now includes uh, not only our research emphasis in both human and, and some small animal research uh, dealing in the area of uh, physical activity and uh, health related uh, projects but also we have now uh, developed uh, really by Dr. Bud Getchell uh, back in the late or in the early 1970s uh, a program for adult fitness uh, that was expanded to include uh, a program in cardiac rehabilitation and even some work now with uh, uh, people who are chemical dependent that is drug uh, related problems so we uh, have a strong I would say a health related interest as well as uh, an emphasis in research. So our academic programs have grown in those directions and uh, many of the students that we've uh, attracted over the years have come here and are now some of the uh, real outstanding people in the country in those areas. What is it that students learn through the program? Well I think uh, one of the most important things they learn is uh, to see how we operate uh, the contact with the faculty here, uh, that obviously on a day-to-day -day basis is the most important thing to them because I think it helps them set their own goals and uh, their expectations in their professional careers. Uh, the types of things that are emphasized, of course, uh, in the academic program is, uh, is really aimed at uh, helping them to work with people, to be able to uh, uh, perhaps do research uh, at a very high level and I'm always impressed uh, with the quality of the students we get. I can only say that I'm glad I'm not competing to be one of the students in this program because uh, they're very, very high quality and as a result uh, the people that we are able to produce get some of the very best jobs and uh, that I think is uh, to me the most rewarding part of my job is to see the success in some of my own students. The lab is recognized as a high-quality program at Ball State. What makes it unique to Ball State and the nation? Well, that's uh, really a tough question because, uh, you know, I, I see our program as uh, sort of a naturally growing process and something that, to me, that doesn't seem to uh, be all that unusual or exceptional, but I recognize also the fact that a lot of people recognize our program as being probably one of the top programs in the country. I think what's unique, again, is really the faculty that we have and the way we work. And I think uh, the opportunities for our students to get a broad exposure, not just in research or not just in physical fitness or in cardiac rehabilitation, the opportunity to do all of those things when they come here gives them a broad scope and an opportunity then to branch out. I think uh, that's probably why many of the students we've had who've graduated from our programs have gone, gone into many different areas. Uh, we have a number of physicians who uh, first got a master's degree with us. We have some of the top 
scientists with the federal government uh, working at NIH and uh, U.S. Army research laboratories. And uh, even some of our recent Ph.D. graduates now are heading up laboratories uh, around the country. So I think th the unique aspect is probably uh, a combination. I can't pick out one thing I think is really unique. I think it's sort of the atmosphere in the lab and uh, the camaraderie that develops among the students. I s I, my own impression is that it's sort of a self-perpetuating thing. You know, good students always train the new ones coming up, and so it makes life easy for me. How is the lab supported? Well, over the years, we've uh, su supported uh, all of our projects, which have, of course, been uh, helpful in supporting the entire lab operation through research grants. And uh, I think uh, some of the early studies we did with heart disease and diabetes uh, and exercise-related activities uh, were all funded by the National Institutes of Health. Uh, since that time, uh, we've acquired other uh, uh, NIH uh, funding for studies on problems of dehydration and people working in the heat. Uh, the U.S. Army has funded us uh, for several years to study the problems of uh, of course, military people exposed to uh, very warm environments and the problems of heat acclimatization, getting used to the heat. Uh, more recently, I think a lot of our attention has been directed toward nutrition, uh, dietary demands of uh, the average person as well as uh, athletes who are exercising very hard day after day. Uh, so there's been a broad base of funding all the way from pharmaceutical companies to uh, uh, nutrition related uh, uh, corporations who are interested in the kinds of things that we do. Um, generally we're pursued by them uh, and uh, the opportunities for us to keep good funding is not hard. So uh, that's made a big difference for us and in the future uh, uh, we'll continue to do research in areas that uh, are of interest to us first of all, uh, but in areas where we know there's good solid funding. Dr. Costell, could you tell us about your funding from the U.S. Olympic Committee? Well, as I mentioned, we've been interested in uh, the adaptations, the training or physical stress, and uh, so only recently has any money been available to fund studies dealing with sport. Uh, our interest in the last few years is focused on uh, aquatics, uh, more specifically on competitive swimming and trying to find out uh, what sort of stresses you undergo when you're exercising in the water because it's a totally different environment and there are many, uh, many physiological changes that you don't experience when you're riding a bike or running or walking. And so we've been approached by not only the U.S. Olympic Committee but by uh, uh, U.S. Swimming, that is the the heavy arm of the Swimming Federation in the United States to uh, set up and uh, conduct research uh, in an area related to aquatics. And so we hope uh, to continue our research efforts, uh, not only with local swimmers and with recreational swimmers, fitness swimmers, but uh, to try to do some very in-depth studies that would be very unique, uh, things that are not being done anywhere in the world, uh, and certainly nothing that's duplication of anything in the United States. Uh, it's an area that's wide open, and I've always tried to pick the things that no one's doing rather than what everybody else is doing. Uh, this particular area is one of uh, not only a unique opportunity, I think, for Ball State to become involved with, but uh, an opportunity for many of my students and me to become uh, more knowledgeable uh, in the area and uh, I think establish uh, the lab uh, as a center uh, that people will come to to try to find out the answers to some of the things about aquatic type research. Dr. Costell, all disciplines undergo periodic changes. What do these changes mean in your field and what do the changes mean for the human performance lab? Well the lab has uh, uh, followed in, in part uh, the, I think, the lay public's interest in uh, regular physical activity and uh, health-related uh, programs, and that's where our 
physical fitness program for adults uh, got started. Uh, now that that's uh, something that everybody seems to be interested in, we'll continue in that area and we'll continue to look at biomedical problems that relate to health and, uh, and physical activity. Uh, my own personal interests uh, are to still look at uh, research problems that focus on uh, how people adapt to physical activity, how, uh, how they respond and what the stresses are associated with different forms of exercise. Uh, we have projects in the works right now attempting to look at uh, uh, our work collaboratively with some people at Purdue uh, and uh, maybe to do some under, under the ocean type studies as well. So there are studies that uh, will take us out of the laboratory, but at the same time, uh, we'll continue to have the fun of doing research and getting answers to problems that uh, uh, in have interested me for 20 to 25 years. So we'll continue uh, on those projects as well.